So thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We are super excited to have uh, Kathy Wichter here um, talking about salary negotiations and other wonderful tidbits for us if we're looking for new jobs and trying to, to, to navigate through all these changes uh, that we've been experiencing lately. So we're really excited to have, um, to have North Country Live Summer Series you know, going and really exploring all these different business ventures. So welcome, Kathy, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, we uh, ask that, that you consider, you know, keeping your microphone muted during the presentation. If you have a question during the presentation, please feel free to tap, you know, type it in the chat and we will monitor that. Um, but if not, we will have time at the very end for questions. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we, we just like to keep and let our, our speaker have, have uh, her mind concentrated without looking at the chat or looking at answers. So, so we're gonna try moving forward with that. So we would like to thank uh, not only Kathy, but also thank the, the North Country um, Foundation, the North Country Community College Foundation for helping us uh, you know, have an excellent quality education and educational experiences for our students and our communities. I'd also like to thank the Opportunities to Share group that, that has kind of created this summer series and our North Country uh, Community College Enrollment Department and specifically my other co-host, Marissa. So thank you everyone for, uh, for being with us tonight and sharing uh, your time with us. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Kathy and take it away. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be doing this. Um, just really short about why in the world I might be qualified to talk about something like this. Um, right now I work for the Adirondack Land Trust and I'm not part of the philanthropy, the fundraising team. Um, but prior to that, for many years, I worked at Alfred University, which is a small um, private uh, four-year college with uh, graduate programs in Western New York. And I was the director of the Career Center there for eight years. Uh, and then became vice president for student affairs. And um, through that time, I had the opportunity to talk with you know, thousands of employers who wanted to hire students, alumni, job seekers of, you know, just in all kinds of different fields. Um, and I also talked a lot to students and alumni and people who are looking for jobs about their experiences. And I feel very passionate about um, trying to get trying to come to an agreement about the salary that is right for you because that sets the stage, um, you know, just for so many things for all of us. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen quickly. So let's see if this works. Can you all see my screen? Yeah, okay, great. Um, so I'm gonna be focusing more on how to evaluate whether or not to take a new position and you know, how to get a salary um, that's fair and how to know what that is. Um, but I really want to emphasize what's here. Negotiation is, um, it's, it's a matter of mutual interest and concern. It's, it's, there's no winners and losers, you know, that the employer wants you because they've offered you a job. You want to work for them. Um, both of you want the same things, basically, which is, to find a job where you're happy and where they're happy. Um, so it's really worth negotiating a little bit. I have never, not ever once, and I would love to hear if anyone's had a different experience, but I've never seen an employer withdraw an offer simply because someone tried to negotiate a salary. Now you can go too far. You can not know when to stop. We'll we can talk about those things, but just asking, I've never once seen somebody just say, Oh, forget it. You know, that's, how dare they and walk away. So I think it's always worth it. Um, really quickly, I am gonna, I, this is not about a gender gap. I'm not, this is not that presentation, but I, I'm putting it up here because I want to illustrate how important it is to negotiate. Um, there, is a, there is a pay disparity between men and women. Um, but I want, to, I want to use that to illustrate a quote from a woman who I really um, think is amazing named Hannah Rosen. She is an editor at Slate Magazine. She's the, a co-host of the podcast Invisibilia, if you like podcasts. Um, and I'm going to read a little quote from her. She wrote, um, and this, is, this quote's maybe a few years old, 
For the past three years, I've been editing the women's section at Slate Magazine. About 10% of my writers are men. There isn't much wiggle room in my budget, but sometimes, in certain circumstances, there is a tiny bit of wiggle room. The women, however, would never discover this because in all of the years that I've edited the women's section, only four of the dozens of women I work with have ever asked me for more money. And only two of the men have failed to ask me for more money. And so I offer that um, because I believe that it is on all of us to ask for what we believe um, is a fair wage and a fair set of benefits. And part of that is figuring out what that is. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about for a little bit. Um, so your bargaining power within the job market is based on a few things. And again, this, is, this, this source is not just from human resources officers and you know, all kinds of articles and magazines, but on real, real people I talk to who are looking, who are taking a look at what they're gonna offer somebody. So it's based on a number of things. Here, here's what they are. What's your degree? What's your major? What's the actual task that you're going to be doing in the job? The geographic region of the country, um, you know, obviously a job, what you're gonna get in terms of salary varies widely depending on whether you're in Buffalo or whether you're in Phoenix. Um, how many years of experience you have and what is that experience? And really importantly, what's the competition going to pay? Um, the employer does not want to be either way higher or way lower than, um, than what their competition might pay you. Here's what they're not, here's what they're not taking into account. They're not taking into account your individual financial circumstances. So, you know, all of those things. Do you, do you need childcare? Do you need to pay for, uh, are, are you taking care of someone in your home? Like that is important important to you it's critical not what the organization is considering when they're off when they're thinking about generally what to pay you um, that means it's really hard you, you this is not you, you, you have to try real hard not to get emotional not to make it personal um, this is not a reflection of your personal worth it is business so here's some rules number one you don't even want to start a job search, as it says here, without doing your research on salary expectation, because really you shouldn't bring up salary like too early in the process. Employers look at that and they, um, you know, it's, it's considered not to be um, the, the cool thing to do, but employers can bring it up at any time. Like the, the first time that you talk to an employer, they could ask you what type of salary you're looking for. So you have to be ready because you definitely don't want to say something that's too high or too low. Um, so if we were, you know, sort of in a classroom, we might practice. Um, what I did instead, though, is just took a look at a couple of different jobs in a couple of different locations to show you how you can get a, a, just a general sense of what jobs pay. And I used salary.com and payscale.com, which are two very common um, sites that people can use. They're both free. Um, they're easy to use. In some cases, you have to set up, you know, an email account and, with them and everything, but you still don't have to pay unless you want very robust tools, which for this, you don't. So I took a look and said, you know, what if I'm an environmental engineer and I want to work in Plattsburgh? Um, and I put in environmental engineer one, which basically means I'm, I'm sort of entry level. Um, behind the scenes I put in that I had a year or two of experience. And what I got here is just a little, a little look, you know, 63,508 is the median that I might expect to be paid for an entry level environmental engineering job in Plattsburgh. That was from salary.com. So I, then I went into pay scale and I said, what if I want to be an event planner and help, um, you know, a hospital system, for example, plan galas and events and things like that. Um, and I put in Queensbury, New York, just for just to pick a spot. And what I found is um, pretty wide range, 30,000 to 54,000. Um, and that depended a lot on what my other credentials are. You know, do I know how to negotiate contracts? Do I know how to um, manage events, not just plan them, you know, et cetera. So I highly recommend these sites. They're pretty basic, um, but they're free and they give good, they give you a good starting point. So 
again, bat, just emphasize rule number one, you have to be ready from the outset to be able to know what, what it is that you're looking for. Rule number two, it's a basic negotiation strategy, not just salaries, but anything, anything that you're trying to negotiate. Um, in general, whoever names the first figure is in a weaker position. Um, so let's say you are asked um, in a job interview, it's, let's say it's just casual, the employer is on the phone with you, on Zoom, whatever, and just says, you know, tell me a little bit about what salary, you're, what kind of salary range are you looking for? You wanna be spot on, you don't wanna to be too low, because if you're too low and I'm trying to hire you, I might think, Phew, you know, bonus, I'm gonna save a little money, get a good person and maybe, you know, maybe be able to pay a little bit less than I was thinking, which isn't it's great for me as an employer, not so good for you as the job seeker. If you name something that's way too high, um, I'm probably gonna be turned off because number one, I'm gonna know you didn't do your homework. And number two, I'm gonna think I can't afford you. So I might, I might um, you know, that, that might impact the way that we negotiate. Um, ideally, what you wanna do is you wanna, if, if I ask you that question, I wanna hire you and I'm asking you that question, what sort of salary are you looking for? Um, you don't necessarily wanna be the first one to name a figure, even if you know in your head that that environmental engineering job should pay in the 60, you know, low to mid 60s range. You don't want to say that. Um, so what you might say instead is something like, you know, my first priority is actually finding the right fit. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not really super focused on salary just yet. Um, in general, my range is going to be negotiable depending on what your benefits are. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the salary range that you're looking at? So you put it back on the employer. And in many cases, the employer is going to say, you know, we're looking in, you know, the 55 to 65 range or something like that. And then, you know, then you have a good, a good idea of whether or not your, um, the figure you have in mind is in line with what the employer has to say. Um, you know, if the employer is just like, you know, no, I really need you to tell me what you're looking for, you know, then go ahead and name, name a, a wide range and we'll talk later about the actual words that you can use. But try not to at first. Rule number three, and I feel super strongly about this, the benefits and the conditions that you're working in, to me, are more important than salary. Benefits are huge. And if you don't have good benefits, then a great salary. I, I, I would take a job with really excellent benefits and a little bit less in salary any day before I would take a job with a little bit bigger number, but bad benefits. Um, everyone that I, so many people are focused on the number, what's that salary number? Um, and that's what they use to make their decision. That's a mistake. You have to think about benefits. Um, and here's just an example. So two questions here. So for college students, um, the, I want you to think to yourself and, um, normally I would have people like try to shout out the answers, but see if you get it right. The number one factor, all other things being equal in the reason that a student will choose the job that they choose, other things being equal, it's not, it's not salary, it's actually the location. Um, location is critical. That is a work condition and a benefit. The, another reason you wanna think about work conditions, what's the number one reason that employees leave jobs? And it may not be what you think, it's not to get a job with a higher salary. Think about a reason you might've left a job, maybe a job that you really liked, in the past. Um, I'm going to give you a second to think about that because I want to see if people get the right answer. Um, so think about that. Any job that you might have left, number one reason employees leave is their supervisor. So really worth um, checking out the work conditions, meeting that person who is going to be um, evaluating you and you know, making sure that you click with that person to the extent that you can. Okay, so now let's talk about the ways in which you might get a job offer that you can then negotiate. Number one, you might get a job offer where truly negotiation is not possible. Um, and you can see on the screen what that might sound like. You know, congratulations, we want to hire you. Here's the salary. Um, you'll find this in lots of government jobs, um, teaching jobs, military 
um, all kinds of things like that. Truly, you know, there is no wiggle room in that case. My husband, for example, is a school principal. He, I'm sure he would love to be able to negotiate, um, but he can't, you know, the, a star, a teacher at step one, um, may, this is their starting salary, no negotiation. So what's your strategy there? First of all, you got to understand what you, what, what exactly the offer is, because sometimes they're complicated and there's words and, you know, uh, acronyms thrown at you and you don't want to accept a job without understanding what it means. Second, you can try to negotiate benefits. Um, the salary may be carved in stone, but the benefits may not be, uh, and the work conditions. And that's um, something that we that you can think about, and we'll talk about benefits in a bit. Um, and then the other strategy with this is, oh my gosh, it's really important if you can't negotiate your salary to make sure you're paying attention to work environment and who your supervisor is going to be um, for the reasons that we talked about. Um, the second option, and this is, this is common, you know, this is really common, is that negotiation is expected. So someone will say, um, hey, we would love to bring you in, into an, in for an interview. You know, what salary range do you have in mind? And remember what I said was, you don't wanna be the one to name the first figure if you can help it. So your strategies are, like I mentioned, my range would vary based on your benefits. Let's talk about your benefits first. Um, or, you know, just, to, you know, first, can you tell me a little bit more about what you're, what you're thinking about the range? Because, you know, I have great, I have my several years of experience at this awesome company and um, I did a feel like I did a great job for them. So I think I have a lot to offer, but I'm really interested in hearing what your range is. So try to get that um, on the table and try to get a, a range from them first. And then the third option is negotiation is not necessarily encouraged, but probably expected. Many, many, many job offers will sound like this. Um, you get that call or Zoom invitation or something, and then you're going to hear your employer say, hey, congratulations, you know, you're the one that you, you had a great interview. We want you to join our team. Um, your starting salary is going to be $45,000. Now, let's say, you, let's say you know that the starting salary should be a little bit higher. Or even if you don't, even if you think the starting salary is kind of fair that they're offering, but you know, it doesn't hurt to ask for a little more. And I truly believe that it doesn't hurt to ask for a little more. What's the worst that's gonna happen is someone will say, you know, I'm not sure, let me go back and talk to whoever, my boss, my supervisor, um, and I'll, I'll let you know. Um, like I said, I have never once seen a job offer withdrawn just because you try to negotiate a little bit more. Now, if you say 45,000, oh, I really need 80. That might be a little, that might be extreme. But you know, you could say, you know, I'm really thinking about the higher 40s. Um, you know, can we meet in the middle? Is there any negotiation possible? So your strategies are something like this. Um, first of all, you never want to accept an offer without knowing what the benefits are. Never, never, never. So if you've been offered a salary, uh, and the job without the benefits, you really need to say, before I decide, can you tell me a little bit more about um, the benefits that are included? Um, in some organizations like large companies, for example, um, often benefits are handled by a different department like a human resources department and the supervisor isn't always aware of what conversations have happened between the job seeker and HR. So they may not even know that you don't know what the benefits are. The second option is what you, I want people to be practicing all the time. You know, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you decided to offer me this job. Really excited about working for this organization. Um, really looking for something a little bit higher, you know, the range of maybe 50 to 55,000. Um, and then you can offer your rationale if you'd like. Again, remember what the employer is looking for. It's not necessarily the costs that you have. Unfortunately, it's more the research that you've done about um, the median salary for, for the position. And just say, is there any room for negotiation? And you're gonna get a yes, or you're gonna get a no, or you're going to get something in between where they might need to check. But ideally, you come back and you get a little bit more money than you thought, which is great. 
Um, I have some resources for you, and then I'm going to talk just a little bit about um, benefits. Um, so for salary ranges, I already mentioned Payscale and salary.com, which are great. Um, if you were thinking about relocating, there's some just outstanding resources out there for um, figuring out cost of living because, you know, a $50,000 salary in one city, you know, is not the same as a $50,000 salary in another. Just for fun, um, the, you know, what I, what's, what's fun sometimes, at least it is for me, is to take a look year to year at what the most expensive and the least expensive places are to live in the, I'm just like thinking about the United States. For the sake of this, just urban areas, like let's just think about urban areas. New York City is the highest. That's probably not going to be a shock by a long shot. Um, the second highest year after year tends to be San Francisco. And then third, interestingly, at least it was to me, is Anchorage, Alaska, which makes sense if you think that people are just, they have to um, transport everything that folks need to live or many things that folks need to live up, you know, quite a long way. Um, Seattle, Los Angeles, Boston, DC, very expensive. Um, lower cities, cities where the where your dollar is going to really stretch are places like Boise, Idaho, Wichita, um, Buffalo, New York. And just again, a fun statistic, I think it's funny. Um, the city in the United States that is dead average, absolutely right in the middle in terms of cost of living is Rochester, New York. And so um, just many, many of us have been to Rochester, and if you think about it, that is the average in terms of cost of living. Um, so all of these resources are great um, resources to use. And I would say don't forget your career center at um, North Country Community College because they have tons of resources and people who are here to help you with these decisions. Um, okay, let me quickly move to benefits. Um, and what, uh, what I want to do is just show you a list of benefits that you can either negotiate for, ask for. Um, you could use this as a checklist. Um, there's a whole bunch here. And again, I'm going to repeat what I said at the beginning just because I think it's, if I leave you with one thing, it's this. Benefits are huge and they're getting more and more important as the job market shifts, um, particularly now as we're all dealing with COVID and the way that the job market is changing in ways that we can't predict. Um, you know, common vacation days uh, or common benefits might be vacation, sick days, and holidays. Um, again, I am speaking about often full-time salaried jobs. If you are looking at hourly or part-time jobs, these are things that you can ask for and ask about. Um, retirement benefits um, are really important. And I remember my parents telling me, when I got my first job at age 21 to start, uh, or my first full-time job to start socking money away in retirement. And I just was like, what? It's so long. <laughs> and now here I am at age 52 and um, super glad that I followed their advice. Um, insurances, especially vision and dental are becoming more and more rare in terms of having vision and dental and things like that bound up in your insurance. So if you see that, that's worth a heck of a lot. Um, sometimes organizations will pay for your tuition if you wanted to go on and get, um, you know, your associates or bachelors or masters or, or something else. That's, again, worth a ton. Um, some of these other things, you know, you may or may not see them. And you may see them in strange places. You know, I've seen signing bonuses for school districts, um, both in very urban and extremely rural places. Um, Flex time, that's something I think we're going to see a whole lot more going forward because pretty much most of the people in the work um, workforce now, well, I don't know most, a lot of the people in the workforce now are finding that flex time is something that they have no um, choice but to have with, with what's happening with COVID. Um, a lot of organizations will pay for you to relocate if you have to. And then, you know, of course, we all hear about companies like, you know, the Googles and the Facebooks that pay for everything from a masseuse to your meals. I have a younger brother who works in IT um, and he, you know, he, his job is fine. You know, he, he likes it and all, but the reason he's never looked around is because every day he gets breakfast and lunch there. They just pay for it because they think it's really important for their 
professionals to just have food while they're working. So to him, that's a huge perk. And to me, it would be too. Um, work environment. And this is, I believe, my last slide. And then what I'll have is some contact information so that you can feel free to get in touch with me anytime you want. Um, the job content, obviously, is it work that's fulfilling to you and satisfying because I don't care how much you're getting paid. If you don't like your job and it's not fulfilling to you, it's not a great job. Um, I know countless people who've chased high salaries and then they are in this work and they're either working too many hours to enjoy the high salary or they just hate it and they're too stressed and burned out to spend any of the money that they're making. I don't, I'm not a fan of that. Your supervisor, I've mentioned before, so I won't belabor that point. Um, just the atmosphere, the job where I have right now where I work at the Adirondack Land Trust, I get to wear, I get to dress down. I'm working with awesome people. We have a great porch where we sit outside often and work. We have a communal space where we have meals, though not again during this particular time. That atmosphere is awesome and worth, um, I wouldn't move to a job with a bigger salary because I love the atmosphere here. What, what's involved though after work when you're off the clock? Um, got to find that out. And that's a hard thing because a lot of employers won't tell you that. Um, that's where you need to do some sleuthing or maybe ask your potential coworkers like, hey, you know what, what kind of happens? Is there, are there expectations of me after work? Because um, too much of that and, you know, that could, that could be draining. Location is obvious. You should work if you can in a place that you enjoy and want to be. Um, and then, you know, finally, these others, do you want to advance in the field? And if so, I would choose a job where you can advance, where there might be those opportunities, perhaps, over one that, um, where it's an organization where you can't um, take on extra opportunities and, and advance. Um, distance of the commute is obvious. And then reputation of the organization. Um, you may be looking at um, a an opportunity with an organization that is not well known in the field and there's lots of reasons to take jobs with smaller or less well-known organizations that's up to you but it is a something to consider um, so with that um, I'm gonna skip all of I'm gonna skip this for now I think but just expect that situations are strange the only one I'm not going to skip is this one if you accept an offer and then you later find out that you agreed to a salary that's too low Oh, and on, on several very heartbreaking occasions, I've had people come to me and say that that's happened. You know, they were not prepared. Um, and they threw out a number just because they didn't know. They thought they had to. Turns out the employer was like, cool, and offered them a job with a salary that just isn't fair, wasn't, wasn't um, right. And honestly, mm -hmm. you're kind of stuck at that point. I, I I've not heard of successfully people going back after they've gotten an, a job offer and said like, oh, I was, I was wrong. I, I should have asked for more because the employer, you, could, you, know, you can always negotiate later, um, like after you've been there for a year or so. But um, anyway, there's some, there's some weird situations. And what I will do is be happy to share my contact information. I love talking with people about this stuff. And if you're ever in a situation where you want some advice, again, like I said, your career center is a great place to go. Um, you know, really caring professionals who, you know, this is their job and it makes them very, very happy to see people land in jobs that are um, fulfilling and paid fairly. Um, but, you know, if you want somebody else to talk to, I'm here, I'm happy to. I. Um, I love it, and so I would just welcome you to contact me if you want for um, any particular questions, if you have a, uh, an experience that you're just trying to bounce off somebody. So with that, I will end and see if there were any questions. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to unmute yourselves and, and ask away. Excellent presentation, Kathy. Wow. I've learned a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have any questions?
I guess I, I'll ask one question, Kathy. Um, I have millennial children and they are always talking about glass door. Um, is that a good place to, to look at, um, you know, maybe, maybe inside, look for inside information about like you say a company or such, is that a good source? If you, you know, you, you don't know your coworkers yet. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Glassdoor, Vault, um, there are some other industry-specific sites like that. Um, yeah, I, I would say with caveats. Um, and if you have not heard of those sites, Glassdoor and Vault and, and similar organizations are like, um, they're places where people can go on um, specifically um, name their employer and then talk about their experiences. So they might you can ask questions, you can ask about the work environment, um, and you're gonna get all kinds of responses. You'll get the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and I think if you're trying to get a handle on the culture of a workplace, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would say sure, take a look. Um, because if there's an awful lot of negative um, information online, then that's, that's important, you know. I know I used Glassdoor when I was looking for um, jobs moving to the Adirondacks. I was looking for conservation organizations, and I did look at Glassdoor, and you know, it was really interesting. I I, I found a lot of insight into individual experiences with different organizational cultures, um, and you know, for every three good things, I would read one really negative thing, and it's just then on all of us to evaluate that information and see what we think of it. And so I definitely don't think it hurts. Um, and ultimately, yeah, if 75% if of that of that feedback is positive, I think I would, I would think of that as a good thing. Um, what's more important though, is to, if you can assess the environment in that location by like looking around, you know, what's on the walls? Is it a welcoming place? Are, do people look stressed um, or do they feel relaxed? Do they look relaxed? Are they greeting you um, in a way that, you, that makes you comfortable? Um, so, but you can't always do that. And so I think Glassdoor and Vault and other types of sites like that are great resources. Great, thank you so much. Um, we have a question here from Barbara. Um, I'm going to read it. Uh, this was a topic I never oh, heard about until you learned a lot. Okay, that was from Martha. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. You know, it, it's, I think negotiating, in, and I agree with you, it's something that you don't always feel really comfortable doing, um, but, you know, I, I think there's only benefit that can be gained from it. I agree. It's really questions? uncomfortable. Super uncomfortable yeah. to talk about money. It's not what we're raised to yes. do. Barbara it's not what we're raised asked, to do. Barbara had asked the question, um, do you see any new work trends? Any new work trends? Yeah. I'm not um, sure what she means, but. You know, I've seen a lot over the past few years, and I'm not sure, maybe Barbara, are you talking about just very recently because of COVID? Um, I can, I definitely have heard some trends along those lines. Um, I, so I'm not sure. Are you, are you talking about more COVID or more like within the last five years? He says yes. Barbara, feel free to unmute yourself so you can have a conversation with Kathy. Um, I can say, and you know, on, on, and Barbara, feel free to like narrow the question if you would like, I guess. What I've seen is real changes in benefits um, over the past few years, um, which is why, and, and in many cases, it's a reduction in benefits that people are offering. And so, which is why I've been stressing it so much. Um, I've seen much more um, kind of swirl. And by swirl, what I mean is people are staying in their positions for shorter times than maybe when I was, um, in my 20s and 30s. Um, so the longevity in positions t tends to be less, you know, and of course going back further, you know, it used to be you would get into a job, you would 
mature through those, you know, you'd move up the ladder, so to speak, and then retire from that job that you don't see that very much anymore at all. I'm also seeing in the job market, a lot of people with what I, what I call and what other people call portfolio careers, side gigs. Um, so people who are working um, perhaps a full-time job and then ha make money on the side doing other things like selling work through Etsy or maybe they're a ceramic artist or maybe they are a farmer um, or cobbling a bunch of part-time jobs together um, to make uh, a living that way. Now my son is in that category. He's got several um, part-time hourly jobs and that's how he, he he feels comfortable. He's 24, so he's got a few years more, two more years on insurance, then he's got to figure out something else. But that's his life right now is making, cobbling a bunch of things together that make him happy. I have seen younger, like millennials and younger, um, much less focused on, I want to work an 80 hour a week grind to make a ton of money. It seems like younger people are much more interested in quality of life. Um, at the expense sometimes of making high salaries, which I'm down with that. That's that. I think that's cool. So those are just some of the trends I'm seeing. Yes, uh, Kathy, thank you. Um, do you also see a trend in the healthcare uh, field, like health homes and and all the other um, uh, stuff that's coming from COVID? Do you think? Yeah, so, um, and I think that's only going to grow. Um, I think, you know, I know in the past 10 years, the past five years, healthcare and information technology have been the fastest growing careers, um, in both in terms of the, um, the number of, the actual number of jobs and the percentage of growth and also good jobs, you know, and um, there are some areas within the healthcare field where that pay gap that I talked about at the very beginning um, it is almost non-existent like pharmacy. Um, so yeah, certainly healthcare is a growing field and it's going to continue to be one where there will be, I think, lots of jobs. Um, teaching is an interesting one because for years teaching was like the safe thing where you got a teaching degree and you could be guaranteed a job. I think we went through a time when uh, a whole lot of people with teaching certifications that couldn't find jobs. I feel like that's reversing a little bit. Um, Mental health um, is uh, an area where there's more jobs, social work. So, uh, lots of the lots of those careers are growing. Thank you. I know um, from my own experience, having a bunch of friends in the educational field, like teaching elementary through high school, they are struggling with the concept of going back to campus or back to their um, respective buildings after this whole virus has happened. And they are, their concerns are valid in my opinion, but they are looking into different options um, and looking to even step out of the field. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'm seeing a lot of that in the last month. Um, and I bet you all are too, you know, lots and lots of colleagues and it's teaching is one that I'm seeing a a lot for all of the reasons that you mentioned. Um, but it, to me, it seems like across jobs, um, people, unless they have extremely accommodating employers, are getting, are, are looking to move. And I'm not sure where they want to go that's going to be better, but I think there's a lot of real anxiety about the workforce and going back um, for those who are, were fortunate enough to, to be able to work from home for a while. So, Absolutely. but especially with teachers, um, I also 100% agree. My colleagues like at other um, colleges in the admissions field are looking into potentially getting jobs within the high schools as guidance counselors instead of continuing with the college recruitment because it's so different than what we all anticipated and what we signed up for when we took our jobs oh so. my gosh <laughs> oh my yeah. admissions student affairs mm -hmm. i i just oh my goodness activities yeah colleges are a special place right now and like i had posted in the chat we get a lot of admissions applications for 
our nursing program and for our healthcare programs at the college. But we've seen increased numbers, which I would have anticipated seeing decreased numbers, especially with the um, information that was initially released about this virus and people being scared of like being exposed and then how they would be dealing with it and what happens if they're exposed and then they bring it home to their families. But we received a lot of applications for um, our nursing program still, which I am grateful for. I'm not going to say that I'm not, but I was just surprised. Yeah. And I, you know, my older son is a physician assistant. He's a trauma surgery PA and um, his, his partner, his fiance is um, a cardiac ICU PA who was transferred to the COVID unit at their, uh, they're at a research one um, hospital elsewhere in New York. And uh, they don't, they're, they're, they're taking this fine. You know, they're, they're kind of much more chill about all of this than um, many people I know who are, who are quite um, upset and anxious, and rightly so. Um, I think healthcare workers, they want to they wanna help people, um, you know, they, they want to help. And also, my son chose the PA job, not because he was desperate to work in healthcare, because, but because he was looking at the highest careers with, like, where he was certain to get a job with a high salary. And he was like, oh, what's this? What's a physician assistant? He said, I think I want to do that. Fortunately, he liked it, but I mean, really, really likes it. But I also think people who are looking for a steady job with a with a good wage um, and good benefits, I, I'm not surprised that they're looking at at healthcare. I hope they're thinking about whether or not they truly want to work in the field. But if they're looking at a job that's going to pay the bills and be um, be there for the long haul, healthcare is it. Don't disagree. Great questions, everyone. Are there are there any other questions? If no, I will say again, thank you so much, Kathy. This has been wonderful. Uh, you have given us a wealth of information and a lot of things to think about and, and many resources um, to help guide us on, on, our, on our quest. So we thank you very much. Um, I also thank all of you for spending your time with us again this evening. We have um, we have a communication uh, and working through through Zoom and and all of the different ways that we can communicate and work uh, with with our computers coming up as our next week's topic. So please consider joining us uh, next Thursday at 7 p.m. as we continue our North Country Live summer series. And once again, thank you, Kathy, so much for spending your time and your expertise with us. Have a great uh, evening, everyone, and we hope to see you again next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.